Rodriguez and Carriedo. David, the quarterback, not only with his arm, but with his feet. And here he's got an eye formation on first and goal from the four. And off in the backfield, stuffed at the line. Didn't get a chance to see who got it. Uh, the Rattlers are saying there's a fumble. And it looks like players are diving for it and coming up with it. Is the Rattlers look like Tino Redamoza? And individual forced fumbles, he actually had two. He's tied for ninth in the league, so here he actually recovered one. And he had three this season, so that's his fourth so far. So Tino's having a great year. There's more movement on the line. The Spartans are offsides. Free play. Pass is caught out there in the flat. Corey Nelson. But this, uh, yeah, the pe Corey this Nelson. penalty will be likely now. accepted from... North Bay side. I'll tell you what, Higgins must be doing a great job, or Higgs is doing a great job with his, his count because he's getting his defensive lineman to jump off sides almost every play. What I'm really surprised about. Third and a long five. Carriedo surveys for the Spartans. Steps up and throws. Has a man complete. Close to the first down marker. See where they spot it. I believe it's going to be enough for a first down. Sharner with the tackle. Making the reception there was Julian Harris. But there is another flag on the play. And I would guarantee it's probably going to be unsportsmanlike conduct. What was it, after the play? It was during the play, during but the, the helmet and got and snatched off. Play. So we'll see what, what happens if the, quarter, if the uh, referees go through their conversation or collaboration to figure out what penalties they want to give what, who. <laughs> yeah, and as they talk about it, that uh, might end the first quarter, although sometimes they don't like to end a quarter on a penalty, and they'll say one second or one more play. Let's hear from our uh, referee, Phil Beltron. see a few more challenges, but right now, everybody's just kind of getting a feel for each other. Well, that was certainly a quick quarter break. wonder if they're uh, in a rush out there, these officials, to get to a concert or something tonight. <laughs> so we're going to start the second quarter. No score. A high punt from Salinas. And fair catch. Called by Michaelin, and he's able to make it close to the 18-yard line. And so the Rattler D holds him, but we do have another penalty on the play. Surprise. We'll try to sort it out. I was about to read some of our sponsors. Well, this penalty, depending on who it could be, this could definitely be a first down for Salinas if it's against the Rattlers. We're only talking about five yards here. So, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, five yards is the smallest. But let's see if it happened before the ball was planted or afterwards. Offense, the legal man downfield. Defense is elected to re-kick. They keep fourth down. Okay, I'm not sure if the... See something a little different here tonight. <laughs> Because that definitely was a ball that Klauslowski should have caught. Instead, it falls incomplete and brings up a third and seven. Higgs on the rollout. Finds another player who's hit immediately, but this time he's able to hold on to it. And that's Michaelin up near the first down marker, but appears to be maybe a tad short. It's, it's pretty close. They may even call for a measurement here. That was Carl Michaelman on the receiving end of Higgs' pass. And it looks like they are signaling first That's down. Well, I'll tell you what, when you throw the ball to just about every one of your receivers and they all drop it, and the only person that's had a little bit of success on the offense is a quarterback and a running back, why not throw it to the running back coming out of the field? Higgs, there he is again, that's Michaelin, 
eluding three tacklers. Finally brought down there by Kiwi Dante. And he's able to get maybe even a yard out of that. And it looked like Carriedo ran into his tailback there. And Redamoza, already with that fumble recovery, makes the tackle. Loss of one, second and 11. Carriedo lets it fly. This pass is almost picked oh, off. Pass almost picked that off. could be offensive. He was able to come down with it. So, North Bay first and ten from their own forty-eight. Once again, last year North Bay beat Central Coast fourteen to twelve in the first NCFL championship game. So that was low scoring as well. Oh, and that's almost picked off. It's caught and then dropped. And I think they're going to rule this one incomplete. They're going to say that Lee Slaughter never had full control of that ball. But that was another dangerous one, DP. That was Shell only has one reception this season, but it went for 55 yards. So he's a big play guy, also plays defensive back. On second and 10, Carriedo. Both teams throwing a lot. Carriedo's looking deep, but that play is well defended. We're nearing the two-minute warning. I don't know when the last time North Bay has seen Michael and rush seven times for 18 yards, but that's what's happening tonight as the Spartan defense has been stout. And we indeed have yeah, reached the two-minute warning. Two minute warning. Give us an opportunity to mention two some more of the sponsors. The Burning Burrow Studios, providing rehearsal studios for Stars of Tomorrow. SFC USA Incorporated, Las Vegas, Nevada, supplier for all custom jersey and shirt needs, Gamma Trophies and Gifts in Millbrae, Mr. C in Heaven, telling it like it is, WDFA Marketing with offices in San Francisco and New York, Lefty Sports Memorabilia of Burlingame, Real Radio 8 of Las Vegas, the finest internet radio, that's realradio8.com, Expression College. With the hold from Kozlowski. And the kick is up, and it's good. So it's 7-0 North Bay. Bob, as he always does. Tempo Enterprises, providing technology and business solutions in San Francisco. Lindeberg and Company, jewelry manufacturing and repair in San Carlos. And the Hispanic Heritage Baseball Museum Hall of Fame in San Francisco. Once again, the NCFL thanks their sponsors kindly. Well, all of a sudden, here at Kizar Stadium, I think the fans have perked up. We got the cheerleaders down there on the field. They've perked up. Both teams now into it. 7-7, second quarter, minute 26 left. And here's the kickoff taken at the one by Michaelin. He's dangerous, folks, and he finds some room along the left side. Cuts back to the middle and is brought down once again by Conan. Conan having himself a day for Salinas, but nice great Probably field position outside. for North He's Bay. That's about a 40-yard return That's there the for Michael. Well, I just got a slight feeling that uh, this football game is about to turn into a basketball game, and they're going to start stretching the field, and we may... Zero on the receiving end of Higgs' pass. Pick up of four yards on the play. So a little two-minute drill, about 50 seconds, seconds remaining here until intermission. Higgs surveys the field. For Salinas. And Higgs is going to throw from the shotgun, and it's caught. And getting up and gaining nice yardage there is Lee Slaughter. Finally brought down, but not before a first down. I believe North Bay is going to call a timeout. with his right shoulder, but he was able to reach through there and get his hand on the ball. And uh, that was a, absolutely a great play. So that just leaves six seconds on the clock. It is second down, but I think North Bay is going to try a field goal here. It's going to be Higgs. They'd love to head to the locker room, even with just a three-point lead. Looks like it's going to be about a 36-yard attempt. 
Higgs' kick has the distance. And it's straight and it's good. So Higgs from 36 yards out. It was a flare out and it didn't, you know, that where I saw the cut block like it was inside the guard, uh, between the guard and the tackle on the, on the left side of the ball. So it was, it was pretty interesting that, you know, they even had to perform that block. On first and 17, Carriedo's pass is complete. Stiff arm right there coming from Marcos Macias. He's able to gain many of the yards back. 14-yard gain to the 20. Joe Lawson received the stiff arm. It was a great play. I mean, if you want to talk about pitch and catch, I mean, it wasn't a great throw, but it was a great play. And the receiver made up quite a bit of yards, so you're looking at what was once one first and 15. We're now looking at second and two. This is a manageable type of, uh, of series so far. Carriedo having a great game. On the rollout, he's going to keep it, and he wisely drops down. Credit the tackle there to Randy Sharner. He's up near the first down marker. He's, I think, all he really wanted. Two Rattlers closing in on him. <clears throat> Causes him to go down at the. We may call for a measurement here. Yard line, close to first down yardage, but they'll measure. Carriedo has now rushed seven times for 22 yards. Add that to his 183 yards passing, and he's over 200 total yards. So you can see why he is one of the top quarterbacks in the NCFL. I think when you look at both, both quarterbacks, they both can do the exact same thing. So that's what really makes it interesting. Just or, shy of the first down. They're really having a tough time measuring this. It looks like and it's going to be short. Inches. Just a couple inches. For the Spartans near the 22-yard line. Mostly passing so far, DP, but now both teams may be trying to establish a little run here. Yeah, I think we just got them mixing it up just a little bit, just trying to keep each other off base. Higgs calling an audible at the line. Once again, I'm Kenny Melch along with Daryl Pollard here for NCFL Productions. Kizar Stadium, third quarter, three minutes left, and that's Michaelin up the middle with another run. Looks like he's going to gain about two. Here comes a late penalty flying in. Once again, Salinas on top, 14 to 10. I didn't catch that. Did you happen to catch it, DP? I have no idea what was going on. It was, that was a great, aggressive play on both sides from what I could see from here. Maybe a late hit. Personal foul. Tyler Larrick, a late hit. Good call by our statistician. Away from him. And we can't forget, like you mentioned in the open, DP, the only loss for the Rattlers this season was dealt to by the Spartans, 15 to 14 in week 10. Higgs on first and 10, in trouble, scrambles. Hit, knocked down from behind, ball comes loose. Let's see if they're going to... Rule it a fumble or a forward pass. No really and now they're going to say, yet. well, they're going to discuss it. One referee is pointing towards Salinas direction. Initially, here's the explanation from the referee. Illegal forward pass. The ball was thrown forward. Illegal forward pass. That's right. Pass is incomplete. I believe that is the correct call. He definitely was throwing it. He was hit from behind facing tremendous. Clock now reads nine minutes and ten seconds. Fourth quarter. Carriedo from the shotgun. Fakes the handoff, and the keeper up the middle leaps over a couple defenders, and he's able to gain big yardage. David Carrido on the keeper. Finally brought down from the Rattlers, Roy Edwards. Big game. And not too often you get to see a
No timeouts remaining for North Bay. In their white uniforms with the orange trim going left to right. Mickelin in motion. Higgs from the shotgun. Penalty comes out. Steps up. Throws it deep. And it goes out of bounds intended for Nelson. Let's see about the flag. Maybe a holding. Robert Gray. Joel Duarte in on the coverage for the Spartans. Penalty markers down. Minute 32 on the clock. Rattler still down by four. Illegal motion. Against North Bay, take them back five, and instead of a third and four, we got...